All right, the next topic we're going to talk about is going to be the application framework and apps layer. We had talked about what an application framework was when we talked about the Android concurrency frameworks, if you recall. So we, I talked about a framework where a framework had this concept of inversion of control and you know, semi-complete applications and domain-specific structure and functionality, blah, blah, blah. And so now what we're going to talk about are some of the common system services that are available in the Android application framework layer. And I'll also then briefly talk about what the apps are as well, most of which you should be familiar with. So there's this weird layer. I mean, it's, it's not weird. It's a cool layer, but it's got a funny name. It's called the application framework layer. And I never quite understood that because it's actually a bunch of frameworks. So it should be the application frameworks layer. But one of the things it provides are a bunch of system services that allow apps to get information and capabilities that they need in order to do their work without having to reinvent all that stuff from scratch. So as you can see here, um, some of the services here expose hardware and Linux OS kernel capabilities up to apps. A good example would be the telephony manager, which gives you the services that are provided by the underlying radio interface on the system, the cellular interface. These services in the app framework layer run continuously. So the, from the point when the system boots to when it either crashes, which doesn't happen very much, thankfully, or you reboot it you know, every week or so, as they always tell you, it's just been seven days since you rebooted, reboot. Um, I always thought that was kind of funny. So basically, these are services that are always running. So stuff like the window manager, that obviously has to run. The activity manager, which does that event routing of intents, that obviously has to be running all the time. Location manager, notification manager, um, telephony manager, these are things that always have to be up and running. And the control flow of these elements, like all frameworks, is driven by various events. Sometimes the events come from below, from hardware. Sometimes the events come from above in forms of user application interactions. And everything's driven by callbacks as well. So that's basically the way those things work. Interestingly enough, uh, the bulk of these system services are written in Java, though there is also a lot of call out to native C and C++ code, because that's what makes them run a little faster. But the basic idea is these are Java APIs. We're going to focus on the Activity Manager service, because that's kind of the workhorse of a lot of this stuff. And it also is cool because it ties together those other components we just talked about, like activities, services, broadcast receivers, and so on, by routing intents between them and or using intents to start up the services in a consistent and uh, robust way. So it's like for some of the services, if, if the service crashes for some reason, the activity manager will notice that and then restart it. So it, will continue to run. Um, so that's basically the infrastructure. Of course, on top of all this stuff are all the apps that people know and love. That's, that's really why you use a mobile phone, right? It's not so much for the infrastructure, most of which is invisible to you, but it's for the applications. And as you can see, there's, there's a lot of them. Um, a bunch of them come packaged with Android. I call those the packaged apps. If you download the Android source code, you will find the source code for a lot of the apps. And if you use a pure Google phone, like I think the Pixel would be an example, or the previous generation uh, Nexus, those are actually the, that's actually the source code for the apps that are bundled with those phones. If you use a phone like, like my phone, which is a, uh, a Samsung, then some of the apps that you get are replaced or augmented with OEM-specific enhancements or capabilities. So bottom line, you know, you can see a lot of the app's code, which is really cool to look at that code. Actually, it's also kind of horribly written, but that's another story. Uh, a lot of this stuff goes back to the early days of Android, and it was clear the people who were writing the code didn't really know what they were doing. Um, they hadn't quite figured out all the patterns of good code development, so they're a little weird. But it, it's interesting nonetheless. Um, there's also, of course, a pile of apps that do not get delivered in open source form. And those are probably the most famous apps, right? So, Google Maps, for example, would be something like that. Um, Gmail would be an example of something like that. And those apps are not released in source code form. And in fact, Google is so protective of the source code that if you take the APK files, which are the sort of the packages that are where the apps are downloaded from the App Store, and you reverse engineer them, 
you'll find out that the source code has been intentionally obfuscated. So they've replaced all the method names with like, you know, one, two, A, B, C. You know, so it's completely incomprehensible, even if you reverse engineer it, which is kind of fascinating. Um, so obviously, they're trying to make it hard for people to figure out their secret sauce for those apps, even though they're released in, in bytecode form. And that's by no means, you know, uh, Apple does the same thing. Everybody does the same kind of thing with their client side code or code that's exposed to users. So there's obviously a lot of good stuff in there. Um, most of these apps are written in Java, but you can also write them in C, C and C++ using the native development kit or the NDK. Mostly that would be done by things like games. So if you use your, your uh, mobile device as a gaming, you know, a gaming console, a ubiquitous gaming console, then some of those apps might be written with the NDK, but by and large, they're written in Java. And increasingly, they're also written using Kotlin. So we talked about that before, and like I said, it's a really interesting language. It's funny because uh, you can really tell that Google is behind Kotlin. Before it started getting used in, in Android, it was this really esoteric language, but now Google's pouring lots and lots of money into Kotlin. Um, what's ironic about that, of course, is that Kotlin is just a wrapper, the implementation of Kotlin, Kotlin is a wrapper around sort of the Java uh, runtime system and, and all the other stuff that's available in Java is also available in Kotlin. They have really cool ways of being able to integrate Java code through Kotlin uh, APIs. So the Java is still there, but you have like a Kotlin facade around it, if you will. Okay, so that's the end of the applications framework and apps layer discussion.